Who doesn't want to become a better climber? I mean, the quicker you go up a hill, then the sooner you get to enjoy the fun part going down. Yeah, well, whatever your incentive, you'll be pleased to hear that there are a number of areas that you can address that can all work to improve your climbing ability. And we're going to be covering all of them today. options when it comes to technique and there's that age-old debate of whether it's best to stand up or sit down and a lot of it does come down to personal preference so much so that if you watch the pros in a race and you'll see some of them going up the same hill standing and some sitting down but there are a few things that you need to consider when you're choosing this yeah one of which is the gradient so as it does start to get steeper more likely going to want to get up out of the saddle just to make things easier for yourself but then as it really does start to pitch up you may find it's the only choice just to keep those pedals turning over. Yeah, and often sitting down allows you to get a little bit smoother because you can continue that rhythm and make sure you concentrate on the full circle of each pedal stroke. And for the more gradual gradients, we'd recommend that you do stay sitting down. And if you're on an undulating terrain, then it just helps you to keep that smooth rhythm as you go over the top. Yeah, but if you are someone that does quite like to stand up out of the saddle, I'm one of them. Well, I'd really advise just trying to hold off until it really does start to pitch up. For a lot of people, it does take a little bit more effort, so you just want to save that. Now, in terms of the technique, well, you want to think of it as if you're trying to put your body weight through each pedal stroke, because if you're stepping into it, now obviously your body weight is then going to be over your hands a little bit more. So just try and keep your hands relaxed, move the bike nice and easily and freely beneath you. Just focus on putting the power through the pedals. Whatever the incline, you want to aim to keep your cadence nice and high, so somewhere between 75 and 90. And as you go up a hill, you're probably going to start to get slower. So therefore, you need to change down gear in order to keep your cadence. And you want to do this before it's too late, as it's much easier to keep your momentum. So you need to look ahead and see that gradient so you can make sure you're in the right cadence and keeping it nice and smooth. Yeah, now if you do find yourself grinding a gear in a low cadence, you're actually going to find it quite hard then to get out of that gear because what's happening is the chain is under so much tension. So if this does happen to you, what you need to do is just sit down into the saddle, don't stand up, and then just ease off the pedals just for one pedal stroke, or not even that, and then just drop back down to an easier gear. But obviously we want to preempt this as Heather mentioned. So as you approach a hill, make sure you ease down, drop down through your gears, keep that cadence high and avoid it altogether. There's no denying that riding up hills requires strength, so getting stronger on and off the bike will certainly help. And hill reps is one of those ways to do that, as you're going to be training those specific muscles that you need for climbing, as well as naturally improving your confidence and probably getting better at pacing. But they can be a little mind-numbing, so if you're lucky enough to live somewhere in the hills or the mountains, then why not go out and do a long ride that just incorporates lots of climbs? But if you don't have any decent hills near you can still strengthen your legs by doing some over gearing sessions where you ride in slightly harder gear than you normally would alternatively you can head down to the gym you can work out your legs and your core and if that is of interest to you you can watch our video on how to get more power on the bike in the gym pacing is key too you don't want to go all out at the bottom of the hill and suddenly find out you've got nothing left and yes you do want to use that momentum as you come into a hill but if you've gone too hard at the start, then it's gonna be a really long way of just grinding it out and you won't have any chance to recover. Yeah, when it comes to hills, you wanna forget about speed and start focusing on some other metrics to really gauge that effort. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have a power meter, this is a fantastic metric to keep a track of. Now, I might add that when you do come onto hills, you'll naturally find a little bit more power as compared to going on the flat. I tend to say it's somewhere around 10% extra but just make sure you keep a cap on that so you're not burning too many matches too soon. Another metric obviously is your heart rate, but also just be mindful that it can take a little bit of time to catch up. So if you are doing short, sharp hills, you may not catch up by the time you're at the top. Yeah, or you could go old school and go with perceived effort. And doing hills regularly is a great way to get to at least know your fitness. And say you're doing hill repeats or it's a hill that you know really well, well you can even use a timer so you know how long it usually takes you. Now, another thing that I used to do quite a lot in my own training was actually pushing on over the top of hills. What you normally see people do is they're so exhausted by the top, they ease up. Now, actually, by pushing on over the top, 
It's actually a really good training method and can make you a much better climber. Plus, gives you a bit more momentum for that flat or the descent after that. Right, we haven't mentioned this one yet and I can feel you shouting at us, well at me, lose some weight, but we're not going to take it personally. It is though a very valid point when it comes to climbing and in cycling we bang on about the power to weight ratio and of course it's crucial but it becomes even more important when it comes to climbing and yes obviously you can increase your power but losing a few extra pounds will make a significant difference and if maybe you're someone who's lucky enough that you don't have any spare pounds to lose, well you can look at your bike and look at taking some weight off or think about it as training and then save those times for races and make your bike as light as possible then. Now another thing to consider is that as hills do start to ramp up a little bit what we tend to see that happen is that the road starts to go diagonally back and forth across the hill with switchbacks every so often. Now on those switchbacks as you round the corner it does tend to be steepest on that inside corner or very often does so you may want to avoid that obviously stay within the rules stay on the right side of the road or the left side of the road <laughs> the correct side of the road and all will be good. Think about which sort of hills it is that you struggle with and then focus on those. It is all too easy to just go and do the rides that we enjoy and the ones we enjoy are usually the ones that are easiest. So be honest to yourself and if say you struggle on those short punchy climbs then go and find some of those and do some hill reps up them or if it's maintaining a good gradual pace on a more clement climb then go and do that as part of a long tempo ride with some undulations. Yeah, now earlier we mentioned about cadence and keeping that cadence up, but you may find that your bike has come equipped with too large a chain ring or a small cassette with quite tough gears. Now for some people that might be quite hard to keep that cadence up with, maybe you don't have the strength or it doesn't suit your riding style. However, fortunately you can quite easily change those chain rings, get a compact or semi-compact setup or go for a larger cassette with easier gears, which is particularly useful if you do live somewhere that's hilly or you're targeting a hilly race. Yeah, well, like we said, we didn't promise a magic answer here and getting better at hills does require a certain amount of hard work. But if you follow these tips and focus on those weaknesses we've mentioned, you will get better at hills or at least you'll get up them quicker. We don't promise that they'll hurt any less. Yeah, if you have liked today's video, please do hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more from GTN, click on the globe and subscribe. If you'd like to find out whether you should ride hills in your aero bars, you can see that video by clicking down here. And if you want some tips on how to ride a hilly bike course, just click down here. And we're at the top of the hill, Heather. Oh yes, the descent! <laughs> <laughs>